and gentlefolk hello and welcome back to the channel i'm going to be your host the sound and today i'm excited to bring a replay cast of the heroic division we'll be going all the way back to week two to take to see pause for doordash take on big push power in a best of three series i do not know the results of the match despite it having been played back in february so if you know the results don't tell me and we can all find out together. It'll be very exciting. A little bit about these two teams. Pause for DoorDash is a new team this season, but they are built primarily out of Nexus Retirement Angle's um, roster back from Season 16 last season. And on the other side of the battleground, Big Push Power, the away team. They've been together in various forms since season 12 so some pretty long-standing synergy there i'll be interested to see if those two teams uh match up well against one another given how much they seem to have played with each other before let's take a look at the current division standings just to see where we're at all the way in week seven i believe um and we can see pause for doordash a little bit ahead of big push power there. Of course, that could mean that Pause for DoorDash defeated big push power back in week two, but it doesn't strictly. Big push power has been able to secure 11 points thus far this season, which is not bad. Uh, checking in on our battleground selection, we can see that we had Pause for DoorDash banning Cursed Hollow and Volskaya with Big Push Power banning out Garden of Terror and Infernal Shrines. Uh, as this is a replay cast, I do not have information on which team picked which map. Um, so I'll have to just guess along with y'all. Um, and for map one, of course, we are headed to Dragonshire. Uh, and it looks like our teams did not set up the lobby with each other on the correct side, so we'll just fix the overlay once we get into the game. Uh, and speaking of the game, why don't we get into it now and see how everything kicks off for our first game of the series. Double check that all my settings are correct here. Excellent. And so let's get into it. And introducing our teams, the home team here on the right, because setting up lobbies is difficult, are paused for DoorDash. We've got C10 Verd on Brightwing, Raver on Genji, McGiblets on Johanna, Yaboy yeah on Hogger, and Buzz on Junkrat. And to the left, in blue, we've got Big Push Power. MRTTO on Anubarak, Alpharak playing Tassadar, Soverne on Anduin, Brickwood on Sylvanas, and Concept playing Urel. Get into the first wave of the game and update my overlay here. Excellent. So, checking in on talents. We've got... Uh, nothing too out of the ordinary. McGiblet's taking a lot of damage there, but doing a good job to hold on to their iron skin. First wave of the game in mid. Cleared by push power ahead of Osborne Dash. 
with all of that great Tassadar wave clear. Thinking about these drafts a bit, uh, with Fuzz on Junkrat, that's going to offer Pause for DoorDash a lot of vision control over this all-important mid-triangle bush. They've also got some great harassment capabilities. We can see Ravar on the Genji taking care of that, making sure that none of Big Push Power are getting through this triangle bush for free. And it looks like we've got Big Push Power scouting out the uh, solo camp take by Ya yeah Boy. Ravar is able to get over in time, and Fuzz protects the camp with that concussion mine. Very well done. An excellent rotation from Pause for DoorDash to respond to Big Push Power's invasion. A real heads up play and awesome vision control. Of course, this puts Pause for DoorDash ahead on the map. They have two. Mercenary camps pushing in their favor, both top and mid. Big push power, focusing primarily on getting that mid wave clear ahead of pause for DoorDash. And we can see with that, they'll start the rotation up to top. A double altar means that Ravar is in range to pick up the first Dragon Knight of the game. So, pause for DoorDash, locking in that first objective. And that is largely, once again, because of their tempo control, getting both of their mercenary camps out early on. At level 4, we saw possession from Sylvanas, electric fence from Tassadar. Pretty standard stuff. Under King, or the Anubarak as well. So, we've got Ravar in the Dragonite working on mid lane while. Buzz, Bird, and McGiblets siege up here in bot lane. And this is something that I think we can all learn from, as this is the highest level of play here in NGS. Getting almost a maximum time, Raver doing a great job to preserve the Dragonite health as much as possible, taking advantage of the Fire Breath. A four hero commitment to bot lane almost secures the kill onto a Nubarak, MRTTO able to escape with the Under King. Burrow charge length. Fuzz is not done, however. They're going to keep <laughs> shelling away and secure first blood for Paws for DoorDash, locking in their level 7 talents as well. At level 7, we've got uh, Cyber Shield from Genji, both spell armor and a charge of block. And with Yaboy yeah having rotated down, Paws for DoorDash are going to continue their bot lane siege, securing this bruiser camp for the push. Of course, Big Push Power have secured their level 7s as well, so they are able to defend on even talent here and with their siege camp to help them out. Raver going over the wall onto Sovern. Soverne, perhaps. Anduin taking a lot of damage and will fall to the Brightwing auto attack. Concept rotates in and gets the boop in on the Giblets. They do not have Iron Skin available, but they'll receive the phase shift from Verd and escape to live another day. So about a level lead here for Pause for DoorDash. They're doing a great job controlling these rotations. They've got these two kills worth of experience, as well as a superior minion experience advantage. So they are well ahead to their heroics. We can see Pause for DoorDash, Funds, and Ravar once again working on the siege camp, keeping up with that macro pressure as the altars unlock for the second objective phase of the game. A lot of pressure being put onto Alpharac there. Fuzz narrowly missing that boot on the Tassadar. It's a tough ta it's a tough matchup for Tassadar. Every time they use Q, it kind of gives the Junkrat an opportunity to potentially boot them. And Pause for have their heroics online. It's Blink Heal, X-Strike, Blessed Shield, which we see go out onto three. 
There's the boop in onto MRTTO. And in mid lane, we had pause for DoorDash securing their second Dragon Knight. So a lot of pressure being put on. There's another great boop onto Alpha Rack, followed up by the Rip Tire. It won't make it to Cassadar on time. So Alpha Rack will live to fight another day. Another boop in onto Alpha Rack there. Falling exceptionally low, down below 200 HP, but they will live all the while in mid lane. Ravar working away at that mid fort with the Dragon Knight, securing the first structure of the game for Pause for DoorDash. We've got heroics on both sides, and we can see that we've got the Cocoon for Anubarak, Archon for Tassadar, Light Bomb for Soverne on Anduin, Wailing Arrow for Sylvanas, and Ardent Defender for Concept under Rel. Yeah, boy, out pretty far in lane here, but Hogger does still have the spin to make it out to safety. And it is now a full level lead on the way to the level 13 talents for Paused for DoorDash. Checking back in on bot lane, Alpha Rack has used their heroic, and Verd gets the burrow charge, but it's Tassadar once again who's in trouble. They will go down once again. Third kill now, unanswered for Paused for DoorDash. Big push power are really starting to fall behind here on the battleground. With this power play, we can see Pause for DoorDash are going to get aggressive onto this bottom siege camp on Big Push Power's side of the battleground. Fuzz able to get all of those boops thanks to their level 4 boom pow. Hitting an enemy hero with Concussion Mine reduces its cooldown by 10 seconds. So that repositioning tool is available for Fuzz. Almost every time Alpha Rax Q is available, putting a lot of positional pressure onto the Tassadar there. Checking in on top lane, we can see Yeah Boy has pushed Concept back to the Hall of Storms, and so they'll secure another fort for Big Pause for DoorDash. In bot lane, that's a kill onto the Anduin. Riptire finds MRTTO. And Breakwood looks to interrupt, but does not achieve it, committing the Wailing Arrow for that attempt. Level 13s are in favor of Pause for DoorDash. We can see Shingon from Ravar on Genji really amping up their single target DPS. Another big power spike for Hogger. Uh, that's with Pummel at 13, and of course Junkrat. Now a semi-global, thanks to their 13 Ripper Air, able to get additional cooldown reduction on their Concussion Mine when only hitting themselves. Breakwood takes a lot of damage there, but in the end, it's Concept who's caught in between all five. They have to commit the Ardent Defender there. McGiblet's Pulls the Blessed Shield and will take out the Drain Eye Paladin. I'm sticking with Drain Eye Paladin. I feel good about that. I think my lore knowledge is improving. You'll have to uh, all let me know in the comments when you actually watch it to see if I'm doing better on that front. This build boss is doing a lot of work down here in bot lane, working on that bottom keep wall. All the while, once again, we've got another DK secured by Pause for DoorDash. This time, yeah boy, in the Dragon. And looks like they're committing to top lane a full talent tier, 16 to 13. And McGiblets is caught alone. It looks like Verd is going to be the one in trouble, but they get the blink heal. Breakwood lands the arrow onto two. McGiblets is the first to go down, and Ravar will escape. Verd gets one more blink onto Fuzz, who is able to escape themselves. Looking for as much slow on this push as possible, Fuzz commits the Rip Tire. All the while in top, we've got yeah Boy working on the top keep. Top is not typically the lane through which you look to end the game, but it is will be a problem for Big Push Power. 
if they have constant catapults pushing against them up there, and it looks like they will. I don't know that they'll be here in time to slow down. Yeah. Yeah, boy, will get that top keep. First keep of the game going over. The question is, will they escape? Ravar is here to cover their retreat. And, of course, Hogger, a very safe hero given their various unstoppable tools. MRTTO gets the cocoon onto Ravar there, already having committed their E. Oh my gosh, it's back off cooldown. So there you go. Uh, yeah, boy, getting a portable over. Silverne will go down there. Another kill, six to one in the kill feed in favor of Pause for DoorDash. And they still have that talent tier advantage. Another kill onto Concept. Seven for one now. Really favoring pause for DoorDash here. And they're going to get busy on this mid keep wall. All the while, we've got Fuzz in bot lane escorting a catapult and a siege camp, trying to put additional pressure onto the bottom keep wall. Level 16's still about a half level away from big push power. They would love to have this for the defense of their bottom keep. And in the meantime, Pause for DoorDash are happy to set up here and try and put pressure wherever they can. MRTTO able to slow that threat a little bit thanks to their trait beetles. Next altar phase announced coming up in the next 20 seconds, which of course means that Pause for DoorDash want to fall back, get their mercenaries prepped and pushing so that they've got map pressure in their favor to try and set up another quick cap on the Dragon Knight. Yeah, boy, caught in between all five, gets the phase shift in time and makes it out with the Hortifold. Right Wing escapes with a blink heal. The cocoon does not land until Bright Wing phase shift or blinked out. So a great five hero commitment, but it ends up not resulting in anything, which means that Fuzz has been unfettered here in the bot lane to work on the bottom keep. They're getting a lot of push done with that camp in range, and they're going to hearth out for safety. This, of course, is also storm talent advantage for Pause for DoorDash. We can see it's uh, Invisible Friends, Living Weapon, Radiating Faith, Cannonballs, and Hogger is still considering what they might like at level 20. There's the stun from Johanna. So Verne takes the X-Strike as well. So Anduin goes down here. Concept falling low. They do still have their Heroic available to them. And they're pop they'll pop it there. Alpharac falling in the end to Hogger. Hogger who locked in the no control here. Mamar TTO eats the Hortipult. Sylvanas will fall, and that's going to do it for game one. A five-hero wipe, an absolute commanding lead from Paws for DoorDash. They've got a lot of push behind them in the top lane, and all five heroes alive to take out this core. So GG and well played to our home team for game number one. So a somewhat one-sided game one there uh, going in favor of pause for DoorDash. We can see that in the kill count here going 12 and one in their favor. Uh, Alpharac able to put out a respectable amount of damage on the Tassadar, but Ravar was able to put a lot more pressure about 12K extra damage from the Genji player. Checking in on builds Nothing too out of the ordinary here. Uh, we saw that full concussion mine build from Fuzz uh, going for Boom Pow at four, bogged down at seven, getting a slow for, once again, this is all kind of tech stuff, trying to punish that Tassadar pick as much as possible. Uh, so there you have it, game one in the books, going in favor of Pause for DoorDash we can get back to the battleground selection
to see where we'll be headed for game one, or game two, rather. Let's see if I can't uh, get these teams back on the correct side of everything. All right, and update the scoreboard as well. Okay, so a pretty commanding game one lead for Pause for DoorDash there. Their draft was very strong for the battleground. Both Genji and Junkrat are very solid heroes for the battleground, being able to clear waves and rotate safely, uh, respectively. Um, so Ravar was able to apply pressure to either side of the battleground. And of course, it really started off with a pretty solid lead rotationally when Pause for DoorDash was able to sniff out the invade on their top camp. Typically, doing uh, two camps simultaneously is a bit of a greedy play, but uh, with Junkrat and Hogger on your squad, you get to be a little greedier when it comes to the mercenaries, both heroes able to solo their respective camps. And with Johanna bringing in additional wave clear, Pause for DoorDash were able to stay even on the wave clear front and get onto both of those camps and sniff out the invade. So a pretty solid tempo lead and they were able to snowball that for a game win. For game two, it looks like we are headed to Tomb of the Spider Queen. So I'll get that second game loaded up here. And we'll see if the lobby has been set up identically. It looks like it has not. Once again, setting up lobbies when there's no caster to remind you in the moment is very challenging. So I can understand how we got our teams swapping sides here. But we should be good to go here. So let's get into game number two of our series, and we'll see if Big Push Power are able to take us to a game three and make it a full series, or if this week two bout was in fact a domination in favor of Pause for DoorDash. So without any further ado, let's get into it. And introducing our teams here on the left in blue, we've got Paused for DoorDash. Verd on Anduin, yeah Boy on Blaze, Ravar playing Junkrat, McGiblets on Garrosh, and Fuzz playing Zul'jin. To the right in red, we've got Big Push Power. It's Sovern, Soverne on Hogger, Breakwood on Mephisto, MRTTO on Diablo, Final Stand on Malfurion, and Alpharak playing Tychus. As we get into the first wave of the game, we can check in on our level 1 talents. McJiblet's opting for body check at level 1. And I'm going to go with Mr. TTO. I'm sticking with that. Or TTO. Perhaps just TTO. Either way, the Diablo has chosen Devil Stew. Not the most common selection at level 1, but with a Junkrat and Zul'jin, the more commonly chosen spell shield, not looking as appealing for the Lord of Terror. A pretty significant wave clear advantage for Pause for DoorDash thanks to the Junkrat pick. Big push power are going to be behind on waves for a bit, at least until probably level 7 when Alpharak unlocks the opportunity for uh, Melting Point from Tychus. And so that is going to put them well ahead macro-wise. It's not giving Fuzz too many opportunities to stack on heroes, however. Checking in on bot lane. Yeah, boy, a little bit behind on this wave, which is going to give Soverne the opportunity to sneak off to their bruiser camp and get that started. McGiblets warding this rotation, making big push power go the long way round. 
and respect that Garrosh Wrecking Ball threat. Checking in on bot lane, Breakwood has rotated down to pick up the gems and the experience. Fuzz has gone unscouted onto this siege camp. So with how long Silverne was away dealing with the right-hand bruisers, uh, pause for DoorDash has gotten ahead on the rotations here, as well as towards their level 7 talents. Checking in, Fuzz and yeah boy were scattered out by Silverne, but not before the camp was secure. Uh, with level 4s online, we've got... Uh, what is that one? Piercing Light for Anduin, looking to stack spell power and get... Um, piercing Roots, Indomitable from McGiblets on Garrosh, a great tool for both engagement and safety. And it looks like we've got Mr. TTO opting for the W at level 4. Buzz doing a great job to protect these Siege Giants, making Soverne think twice about stepping up to give the Zul'jin stacks. And I didn't call it out at first, but Fuzz has opted for Bone Slicer at level 1, as, to, as opposed to the more commonly seen Recklessness, uh, followed up by Voodoo Shuffle at 4. So they'll be able to deal with the roots from Final Stand. MRTTO unable to get the Shadow Charge out thanks to some well-timed Indomitable usage from McGiblets. And a lot of HP trading back and forth, but in the end, no one will fall. In mid lane, Ravar has a weird interaction with Shadow Charge, but has pushed this Bruiser Camp up to the mid fort wall. They've already gotten that first tower down. So a bit of an XP lead in favor of Pause for DoorDash, which we can see is thanks primarily to their minion XP and mercenary XP advantages. Level 7s in their hands. Pause for DoorDash. Look to step up here. Verd and Funz both falling very low. Breakwood putting in a lot of damage with the Mephisto. Both teams have enough gems to secure the first Webweaver of the game. Looks like most of them sit on Hogger and Mephisto for big push power. Indomitable and a uh, Jet Propulsion will be the end of Diablo. First Blood going over to pause for DoorDash, and with that kill, that will likely secure them the room they need to turn in. Looks like we've got Verd and Fuzz on the top side doing just that, and that will secure the first objective of the game. Breakwood tossed in, and that's going to be the end for the Mephisto. McGiblet's down below 100 HP, but the melting point damage is not enough to overcome the trait armor from Garrosh. Ravar narrowly missing that wall. MRTTO trying to get aggressive there and put some pressure on the primary wave clear of Pause for DoorDash. So three kills to zero, Pause for DoorDash look to be in a commanding lead in game two, and this mid fort is likely not long for this world. Yeah boy, getting a cheeky stun in from the back bush in the bruisers. And Fuzz and McGiblets continue to bully the Lord of Terror there. Alpharac doing a fair bit of damage there onto McGiblets. They've gone for In the Rhythm at level 4, and they've got 56 stacks already. Not a bad... Oh, Alpharac booped in a great... And the stun from yeah boy. Diablo will go down as well. Five kills unanswered now for Pause for DoorDash. So Verne still holding on to a fair number of gems, so the economy of big push, big push power is not completely in shambles, but their structures certainly are losing both mid and top forts in the first push of the game. Heroics online for pause for DoorDash means we have a guillotine game from Fuzz? Fascinating. Uh, and level 7 continuing that Q build with Vicious Assault. Uh, I would not have expected uh, guillotine, 
but you know, I I'm a not a ranged player. Yeah, boy, taking a lot of damage here. MRTTO gets the flip over, but Giblets gets the rotation in time to save their offlaner. Fuzz looking for oh my god, yeah, boy, pops the <laughs> combustion. Another heroic I was not expecting. Looks like we've got a lot of uh, uncommon picks for pause for door dash. Combustion, Rocket Ride, Decimate, uh, all outside of what I would have expected to see from these various heroes. Uh, and with Boss working on top keep, we've got Pause for DoorDash splitting up their pressure and working on the bot lane here. Big Push Power have their heroics now. Uh, it's Portapult, Durance of Hate, Lightning Breath, Twilight Dream, and Commandeer Odin. Uh, and this is their opportunity. Oh, final stand booped in by Ravar. Will go down. Fuzz falling low here. Does not have the unkillable. Looks like it will be two for one in favor of Pause for DoorDash, however. And they're not done. Chasing on to Alpharac here. An excellent route from Verd will secure the third kill in their favor. So Verne trying to escape here. Gets a great spin out, but Ravar is on the case. We'll see if McGiblets and Verd are able to chase them down. They may have their spin back up, and they narrowly escape sub 300 HP. Diablo likely to fall. Ravar gets another boop, but it does not knock Diablo into the team. So level 13 advantage now for Pos for DoorDash. We've got. Fuzz picking up Eye of Zul'jin, getting move speed every time they land an auto attack. And so Verne has to use the Hortipult to safety. Will get out with sub 500 HP, but Bird chases them down. A bloodthirsty Anduin, but they're not going to make it. All the while, MRTTO separated on the backside. Fuzz looking for the kill and will secure it. That is a lot of gems on the ground, but Final Stand is in range to pick them up. McGiblets gets the save onto their Zul'jin with a timely into the fray. Catapult is connected with the bot keep as well as the five heroes of Pause for DoorDash. This structure is likely not long for this world. We'll see if Alpharac is able to kill it off thanks to the level 7, level 1 combo of Quarterback and Melting Point. But the wave came in and bought Zul'jin enough space to finish off those last couple of autos. A stun chain onto Diablo will secure another kill. 12 to 1 now in favor of Pause for DoorDash, and they're not done. Make it another two kills. Big push power. Have to keep Breakwood alive if they want their economy in tack. Fuzz lands those autos. And Soverne still holding onto the gems. Do they have the unstoppable? They will escape. 65 gems in their hands. They're trying to slow down this push, and Azul Jin having died helps, certainly. Uh, we've got Ravar on the backside turning in, but mathematics is hard, and they will be too shy of the second objective phase. Level 13's four big push power. That unlocks a big power spike for Hogger on the pummel. Uh, as well as Mephisto for sh with Shard of Hate. Uh, so they continue to scale, but they are a talent tier down now, favoring big push power. Ravar almost daring big push power to engage onto them with the rest of their team out of vision. Big push power will get onto their bruiser camp, but here comes... Pause for DoorDash. Final stand caught by McGiblets there. And Malfurion will take a lot of damage here. It's McGiblets who's likely to fall. And it will be two for one in favor of Big Push Power. The combustion onto Breakwood here. And it looks like they will fall. So two for two. An even set of kills. Yeah, boy gets the stun. But... Saverne not finished. Alpharac able to pick up those kills with 
some additional minigun damage. So this is definitely the sort of momentum shift that Big Push Power need to get back into this game. Yeah, boy, stalling that turn in on the bot side. And once again, Ravar getting waves pushed out. They're comfortable to do that thanks to their level 13. Once again, we've had the Junkrat opting for Ripper Air, a very popular choice for enabling split push and safe clear on far waves. So turn in available for both teams here. We've got Fuzz starting up the boss solo. I don't think Big Push Power have sniffed it out. They're instead sending all five of their heroes to try and guard this turn in. We'll see how successful Fuzz is in stacking. All right, Red Web, Red Web Weavers have been summoned, so they know that the boss is on the table. Hogger over the top gets the stun and kill onto Fuzz. So there's a stun in a great unstoppable, but it won't be in time. So a boss and turn in in favor of Big Push Power. The Durance of Hate will not connect. And a huge play from Big Push Power to punish the somewhat greedy macro attempt of soloing the boss. So Verne gets the spin through to drop Fort Aggro. They'll be healthy and make it back to the fort to whittle this down. So the Web Weaver and Boss are both still above 50% HP. Looks like Big Push Power are heavily committed to this top lane push, as well they should be. This is their highest likelihood of finishing the game in a win. Uh, Still waiting on respawns. Pause for DoorDash are doing their best to get as much anti-siege as possible. Saverne over the top with the Hortipult will not connect. MRTTO taking so much punishment from Fuzz. There's a huge guillotine taking out two there. Pause for DoorDash will probably save their top keep. And despite not going recklessness, Fuzz has gotten fully stacked on their You Want Axe baseline quest. So a two-level lead for Paws for DoorDash well ahead to their Storm Talents. Checking in on bottom, so Verne and Alpharak get sniffed out by McGiblets just as Paws for DoorDash get their gems turned in. So Alpharak will look for a few more dings there, but won't be alive for this defense. MRTTO getting the wall bang onto yeah Boy who is unable to connect with the Jet Propulsion. The chase is on. Guillotine lands. Level 20s are online. We saw the Buzzsaw from Fuzz there at level 20. The Guillotine that rolls after it lands on the ground. And three Catapults and a Zul'jin with the objective spawning here. Fuzz may go down. A great pull from Verd will save their auto-attacker. Core shielding still alive for the time being. Big push power don't have their best wave clear ranged back from the graveyard just yet. So Verne will go down an unfortunate loss there. Yeah boy with the flash fire on the final stand. It's gonna be another kill in favor. 23, the final kill count at this point. Make it 24. Can they secure a full 25? It looks like Breakwood will scoot back into the Hall of Storms, and there it is, a pretty decisive commanding 2-0 going over to the home team. So GG and well played to them. Uh, checking in on our talents, Verd actually able to get many stacks on the Piercing Light that uh, ramps up the spell power that Anduin has. So that does a lot of benefit for the healing throughput of the Boy King of Stormwind. Uh, so Verne at level 4 opting for Brute Force, not something I see terribly commonly, but they almost finished the quest. So a lot of auto attack damage in their favor. That was paired, of course, with Furzerker, uh, which gives uh, additional damage on the auto attacks. So a non-standard Hogger build but 
it's always exciting to see how these high division players spec heroes differently. Uh, I got to call out Alpharax in the rhythm stacks. 154 is a lot. Um, I don't know how much that is in seconds, and I'm not going to do math for y'all because I got an arts degree. Um, but the stat lines kind of say it all. Fuzz able to get 70, almost 75,000 heroic damage uh, and 24 kills in favor of paused for DoorDash to the 7 of big push power. So a pretty decisive 2-0 for this week 2 matchup. Uh, so not too surprising um, given their places in the standings. We can update our scorecard there and uh, head over to our post series. Um, both games very, very kill heavy. Not what I would have expected. Certainly not out of the Dragonshire game. Um, but pause for DoorDash, I think, had solid drafts in both games one and two. The Junkrat Genji pairing along with the Hogger on Dragonshire was a big boon for them. Uh, Johanna also rounding out the wave clear that Genji doesn't necessarily bring. And on game two for Tomb of the Spider Queen, Blaze and Junkrat both able to do a fair bit of wave clearing on their own, which bought space for Garrosh and Zul'jin to kind of hunt for the rest of Big Push Power. Big Push Power, of course, had some really great moments there. They, in game two, almost got that push through top lane, uh, but, of course, some well-placed displacement from McGiblets on the Garrosh stopped that push before it got all the way through the keep and to the core. So in the end, it is the 2-0 for the home team. GG and well played, and that'll do it for this replay cast. Uh, I think I'll call it there for the day as well. Before I sign off, I just want to give a huge shout out to NGS for being such a great league, uh, and to all of the artists, programmers, and musicians whose work I featured here on the stream. It wouldn't look or sound anywhere near as good without all their contributions. And I've got links to all of their work below the video, so please go ahead and check out all of their work. Support them where you can. They're excellent folks. Uh, until next time, good luck and have fun. Peace and love. <laughs>